All right. Welcome again, Mira yeah. Kim of Arbor Entertainment. So we're in a cool location. Um, so this is actually right, right at the edge of Sunken City, right? Do you want to mm -hmm. tell us real quickly about it? Or? I don't. Well, I don't know a whole lot about it, but um, it's just these cool little like, ruins over right over in that direction, and um, a lot of graffiti artists have taken uh, the liberty to decorate there. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll probably try to. We'll see if we can't get some footage down there too. And we can add it into this video also. Yeah, yeah. But it looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. I guess like it's all paved, and then it just as erosion happened, it just started eroding into the ocean. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, it's just giant pieces of concrete over there, and then also on the front wall. But it looks really cool. So we'll try to get some footage down there. But we're here to talk about uh, a few things, right? So well, a few different 360 videos and uh, different aspects that were raised by a critic of some of these videos. Like, and like basically like what is happening when you're watching a 360 video? I mean, do you, cause like you don't necessarily have agency um, for the most part, right? And then um, so what kind of experience is this? Because, um, like, well, we'll let's go ahead and just introduce some of the videos that we're talking about. So uh, one is uh, called Help. It's, it's a couple years old now from Google Spotlight, uh, like 360 videos that they put on YouTube. Uh, it was directed by, I gotta say, uh, UCLA alum and uh, my old college buddy, Justin Lin. Um, he did a great job. It's like, a, it's about a, um, like, temporary alien invasion kind of yeah what seems to be yes yes exactly and so um there was an article about it saying where the reviewer said that they they couldn't suspend their disbelief because for many reasons right so one is that like um he's not like does what well, we assume like doesn't have agency there but also how well it was done like there is really smooth camera transitions that take someone throughout um, this part of the section of the city into the subway um, so that really got him out of that right so um, actually why don't we go ahead and start there yeah. it's like does someone how it like okay, what would make someone suspend their disbelief or um, is, is should they change their expectation like what, what do you think well I think a lot of it has to do with um changing expectations as far as going into it um, a lot of times when I when I demo uh, 360 videos um, I'll notice that people will like look for their hands or their feet and they'll be like oh now I can't this is so weird I can't see my feet um, and I think maybe just uh, as, as part of our responsibility like introducing 360 video to people who've never seen it is giving them just maybe like a 10 to 15 second rundown of what they can expect. Um, maybe that would also help, you know, with the, I guess, whatever disconnect that they might feel with it. Because, um, like, personally, uh, I, I did disagree with the, the article in the sense where, like, the, the smooth movement, like, drew me in more so than any kind of, like, um, jerky movement. Because if, if the, imagery around me is doing something like reacting in a way that I wouldn't react and rather than in some kind of consistent form because that smooth movement is just like a consistent movement like moving you from one place to another just following these characters and then everything else is up to me to like look around but if suddenly like the camera like the like the world around me like shakes because like I'm supposed to be reacting to something like the you know like the alien is or the monster's like right behind me, but maybe I'm looking this direction and then all of a sudden my whole environment like shakes because, you know, yeah. uh, the character, if I'm supposed to be the character and suddenly I, I get startled, but I don't actually see what I'm getting startled by, that's also disconnecting. So I think it's, you know, it is a, a lot of like leveraging expectations in that sense, but it's also like in, in all filmmaking, People have like will always seem to go in with some kind of bias and thinking yeah. that you know they're gonna be watching a specific kind of thing and if it doesn't happen then they're like oh well it wasn't realistic enough or it wasn't this or it wasn't that 
Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should just tell people, just get, just when you watch it, just get in there and just don't expect anything and just see what you experience, you know? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and give uh, the viewer like an example of what this person is talking about. So uh, let's go ahead and see if, I wonder if there's, if there's a way to really... Should I like cheat it somehow? Or, like... I wonder how, I wonder if you can kind of might. Yeah, who knows. Oh well, Sid. So, or maybe we'll, I'll show you a little bit from this angle. <laughs> Let's see if you can kind of see. You can definitely see the camera reflection. <laughs> but you see the, this movement is really smooth. Mm -hmm. um, we're going into the subway and then the train starts to move. All right, so it's just, it's just so well shot, really. And like truly, this is the way I'd want any kind of action sequence to be shot yeah, because like- Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because uh, like, what frustrates me most of like any type of like live or like any viral video where it's like something silly happens to someone and they get injured or whatever and um the person who's filming you know it's usually like an average joke coming on their cell phone but then like they drop the camera or the camera moves and it's like i yeah, i want to see, see. With the action at all. yeah and so um that didn't take me out of it personally so um like I want it to be that way. I want to be aware of everything that's going on, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to having like a camera shake or anything like that. So. Yeah, and also, I mean, I think there have been more. Uh, I think I read that like more people are mu much more susceptible to feeling a physical reaction to shaky 360. Mm -hmm. Um. So the smoother it is, I think, uh, overall, it's a better experience for most people. Because otherwise, even if if um, it seems like theoretically that like having the, the camera like move or shake as you're like going down uh, through the, the subway or like, you know, doing any kind of movement, like when our eyes, they automatically stabilize. So like uh -huh. when, we're, when we're going running down the street, the, the horizon doesn't do this, yeah. right? Yeah. It stays smooth. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's more, to me, that's more realistic, like seeing a, a smooth movement. Yeah, exactly. Like then that's like, you, know, you just put it in a nutshell there. Um, but let's go ahead and mention then the next video that I wanted to talk about, it's called Cupid. It's from Revolver Labs. Um, what they did, which I think is brilliant, is basically just another example of a, a very well shot 360 uh, short film um, I think they want to make it a, like a, into a series mm -hmm. um, so this is like just basically a three minute like um, intro kind of teaser thing but um, basically they use a lot of like cinematic elements mm -hmm. in their filming and I personally think it works I don't think yeah. it's like uh, disorienting or anything and like yeah. it starts off like with camera moving down like it's a really yeah, well shot right. thing where they're going down the down this uh, alleyway in a smooth uh, these are just smooth all around. Yeah, I think the mo the key for movement in 360 is like having it smooth. Um, I haven't seen and I haven't seen anything successful yet where you have the, the shaky cam. Mm -hmm. In fact, like in 360. Yeah. But um, I've I've also then again like it could be personal taste because like like you I've never been a huge fan of like. Um, like crazy handheld like I don't mind handheld when it's like there's still some smoothness to it so that like I don't like my eyes don't hurt looking at the screen um, and that's just you know framed a framed screen and I can't imagine like seeing that in like 360 <laughs> yeah <clears throat> although I have seen it because like I've done you know when I first started shooting you know, just needed to try to test everything. Mm -hmm. So I would just go walking around with the 360 camera and those shots, like, I sat through them and I got through them, but they were not the best experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I pretty much decided there that like, oh, I can't, I, I shouldn't do like um, moving shots that are super shaky. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have an experience like that too. Like when I was in Singapore, I really wanted to film uh, at Gardens by the Bay. Like they have this really cool park for everyone. And then um, so I was trying to use this dolly thing to mm -hmm. walk through it, but everything's kind of like, uh, like almost like cobblestone mm -hmm. in a way, like little rocks. And then yeah, the footage, like if I wasn't yeah. moving, it's great. But as soon as I move, then it's just like the, yeah. whole, play, <laughs> the whole place starts vibrating. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna actually revisit that footage now that like um, the soft on the software side, there's a lot of stabilizing um, options now mm -hmm. that have gotten really uh, pretty precise when it comes to stabilizing footage. So maybe I'll revisit that footage and see if I can salvage it in a way. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, especially yeah, as technology progresses and stuff, and editing. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's so many different programs now and different plugins and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, that'd be cool. There's, I mean, there's so only so much you can save, but I think the stable stabilization is one of the things that I have. To me, I've seen like leaps, uh, like progression when it comes to like this, like the stabilizing algorithms and everything. So, I think I might be able to sell these that now. Oh, awesome! <laughs> well, I'll give you my footage from Singapore. Then. Okay, I'll see uh, if I can sell these. <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, I think we kind of uh, discussed like other, th like the main gist of this, where it's like, yeah, the the yeah. viewer themselves really either it's up to us or themselves to kind of uh, set up the expectation because yeah. they they don't really have agency in these in 360. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the things. Maybe I'll bring it up from like um, at, at Stanford. They try to use 360 to help patients. Um, like, and they consider 360 video to kind of be one of the first steps that helping people with phobias so mm -hmm. then they'll, they'll, they've created a bunch of like for example if a patient has claustrophobia then they'll create a bunch of short 360 uh, videos where like all the doctors will go into the, um, an elevator and like the camera is the patient mm -hmm. so then then you're there and you have to be like like crowded in yeah, yeah, yeah. right um, but they they feel like that's still kind of like one of the first steps mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the most effective at helping patients get over some of their phobias mm -hmm. um but yeah and I, I think that could be just be one of those things where it's like you kind of you kind of gotta um uh like set your expectation because yeah 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 definitely and also um with the um just kind of going back to keep it the because you were talking about the cinematic style i really did enjoy the cuts Mm -hmm. the way the their placement their creative like placement mm -hmm. of their camera and it's just like you know um in in regular uh frame like uh narratives where you're cutting from different like points of uh i guess points of view and um like i don't i can't think of anyone who's like oh that that's totally unrealistic like I would never be looking like hanging outside the car window and looking inside the car. It's just kind of accepted, like you know that's mm -hmm. that's just one of the shots that people get. Mm -hmm. And I think um, because like there's all this like initially there's all this uh, I guess uh, what do you call it um, when people just constantly like barrage you with like what you should and shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I kept hearing is like, forget everything you learned in film school. Mm -hmm. you know, after I was shooting for a while, I was like, no, don't forget everything you learned <laughs> in film school. Like, just take what you know, what you learned, and like adjust it yeah. for this, you know, for, to this new style. Um, but I, I'm glad that you know people are going back to that and realizing that you know that we shouldn't forget everything. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, doing different like angles, like you can. You can do different angles in 360, yeah. you know, and have like interesting like like points of view, like having a higher point of view versus a lower point of view, like gives you a different feeling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's still a lot to explore cinematically in 360, mm -hmm. and so I'm really looking forward to like you know just shooting more and seeing what other people do creatively and mm -hmm. blending like what you know as far as any filmmakers, if they're more traditional filmmakers who are starting to get into 360 and VR, like what, you know, what they'll do to like modify what they've learned in order to make, I guess, some more creative decisions in the studio. Oh yeah, that, that, no, that totally makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that will really ultimately help propel 360 uh, as uh, into the future, but also uh, elevate its status 
as like a viable option. Yeah. Because right now I think there are a lot of people um, saying like, well, you don't like, why would you shoot in 360 for something, you know, that, you know, like they're, they're already trying to categorize things. They're yeah, making up all these yeah, rules. Like, yeah. well, this is, some, this is too simple. Yet. Like, don't do it in 360 or this is whatever. And it's yeah. like, and it's like, well, in the case of Cupid, um, I think it can work even as like a, even like a flat thing. It's like one example was like, well, I watched it a few times before we met today. Mm-hmm. And one time I just watched it, um, you know, on the YouTube app, uh, how like if I slide it down and it makes like a tiny little window, mm-hmm. so I can still hear the audio and I just see the picture, but then the cuts are so smooth and they're always uh, keeping the focus on what you should be looking at, mm-hmm. which in no way, like even if you're wearing the goggles, it, di- it didn't seem to bother me. Um, didn't get, make me nauseated or anything, but when I saw it in this, this little window, it seemed to work even as like a 2D yeah. uh, like feature or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think uh, that in a way m- makes it viable or it makes 360 like like something that people can shoot in almost for anything really. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, you can be selective, but I mean, like, why not like like add it? Because like sometimes now, even in some pictures or um, some videos. Or like I hate being tricked, like on Facebook, <laughs> like, like a lot of people are posting 180 pics now on Facebook, oh, and I'm yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. I start to swipe around and I was like, actually I do want to see the whole 360. Yeah, I think that's an interesting thing too, because like, so I've been also reading up about uh, 180, because uh, I actually um, got a chance to shoot with the U180 a little while ago, and uh, I was just reading about how some you know some people were saying that it's more or it's being marketed as more immersive than 360 and I'm guessing that it's being marketed that way because so far I think all of the 180 cameras that they have out are um, stereo Mm -hmm. but I I did the same thing like I kept wanting once I got to that edge I was like I want to know what's behind me you know because I'm now that like now that I'm so used to seeing like the whole like 360, like I do want to, I mm-hmm. want to see more. Yeah. Um, but and so I find, I personally find 180 really frustrating. <laughs> I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan. Uh, I like the, I like the stereo, um, but because you know I, I, seeing things in depth and everything like that looks really cool. Um, but stereo 360 is hands down so much better. Like, yeah. even if most of the action is happening here. I like to see like uh, all around me just to see like oh, okay so this is where I am and so once I like settle into okay so this is where I am and then I can focus on this action here yeah and also like um, I do realize that like uh, it's you know it is difficult to like uh, switch action because like you don't want your you don't want to have your audience like get whiplash and like having to do this all the time mm-hmm. But yeah, at the same time, I liked how um, even with uh, well, with uh, help, like there's a lot of action here, and you do want to look around and up and down and everything. But I never felt like, oh my gosh, like what's yeah? I never mm-hmm. felt frantic, I guess, mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And so I think they did a really good job, and I think that's also something they got to think about when you're like pacing wise, you know, uh, like where you place your action and like how people react and how you know, you got to. I think you have to give people time to like when these people here react to something you have to give them time to like look around before like yeah. you have whatever character here do something like that's significantly important mm-hmm. and um yeah i think you know again kind of just going back to the whole like the stuff that you learn in film school like pacing and just like good storytelling like you have to bring that into this space too yeah, yeah. i got really off topic from the 180 but did it circle back to something? <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah, literally, right? That three, I think it's important. You did a 360 circle, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was totally true. Like, uh, you brought up, like, so many good aspects where it's, um, that hopefully anybody who's listening to this, then they can, they can take into consideration when they're filming something, especially any mm-hmm. scripted thing, too, because, mm-hmm. like, it can help what they're, when the, right at the beginning, right? So something crashes from space and then uh, you'll see like these cops pull up in the, their car and then they pull their, they, they pull out their guns right? and you can see like they really are focusing on something. So then that, that kind of gives you the, the cue or oh, I should probably turn my head and look what's yeah, behind yeah. me. Right? So like that, 
those are the really important things or the real details that the director uh, has to take into consideration or even people who are writing for this you know they gotta the, make sure they take the pacing into consideration allow the, yeah. the viewer to move their heads and stuff so, yeah. yeah you brought up some really excellent points that people really people who are getting into this or even like some pros like i, I think like yeah, I, poorly, I think we're all having to remind ourselves yeah constantly like to to stop telling us no we can't do this mm -hmm. instead just like well just try it and see what happens um because too like i do find a lot of times like uh, even now, I, I do catch myself saying, saying to myself, oh, I, sh I shouldn't do that. But then I'm like, well, well, I haven't actually tried it yet, so I should just try it and see what it's like mm -hmm, first before mm -hmm. I decide that it's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's not worth doing. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I, it, the, this, that's the great thing about, uh, I guess, this, you know, being a 360 filmmaker is um, constantly telling yourself yes instead of no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then just see how it works out. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think we could probably uh, end it, it there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you again for yeah. meeting with me and then in such a cool place. Yeah, uh, we'll find some more cool places to go to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, cool. All right, well, thank see you. you. Next time. See you.